Hi. This is going to be a very quick walkthrough today of the Nocturne Cello Library by Orchestral Tools. This is version 1.0. It's a cello, and it's just recorded in one dynamic. Uh, normally, you would be used to having three or four different velocity levels. This is just the one, and it's by design, uh, because if you record multiple dynamics on solo instruments, you hear a lot of phasing. And so what they've done is they've gone, okay, we're going to have one dynamic, but we're going to put a lot of dynamics within, sort of baked in, that you've got some control of. And you have got a little bit of mod wheel control as well, which I'll show you in a minute. You've got a multi-patch, which I'll look at at the end. And then there's these different legato patches, which you're going to spend the majority of the time looking at. And then some of the articulations. I've put it all into quick load here in the contacts quick load so it's nice and easy to get hold of um, it won't appear in here it won't appear in contacts library section because it's not a contact library so you need the full version of contact to play this so let's take a look at this the legato patch here you've got different strengths of vibrato all of this is it's adaptive legato so these different articulations and different length legatos are triggered by how fast or slow you play which is very smart and there's a lot more even going on here that when you play at different velocities, different things might get triggered, which I'll show you in a minute. Under the hood, let's just uh, have you, give you a quick listen. So let's play a C. That's what you've got on the close mic uh, one. You've got an alternate here, if I just click the top. Uh, it's very similar. It's a subtly different tone. No ambient mics and all that. If you take off, this is the built-in impulse response from Teldex, which is the, I think it's in Berlin, the studio in Germany where they do their recording. And, um, so that's it, completely dry. And this is with some of the Teldex in there. Under the hood, you've got various other controls, um, uh, the and then CC controls here. You can set up exactly as you want it. There's all sorts of clever stuff that Capsule does. I'll show you a little bit uh, of that in the multi-video, but I'm not really going to go into this. This is 2.5 of Capsule, which is their scripting to so you can customize things exactly as you want, and it can you know do all manner of clever things. Oh, and there's Consordino. Let's quickly show you that before I really get into it. Um, Consordino with mutes. Uh, this will be a. That's a sort of an EQ Consordino. It's not different samples, but it works pretty effectively, I think. Okay, so let's get playing. As you already you can see, as I'm playing, it's starting to trigger the slow legato transitions and then faster and faster as you play faster and faster. goes really high. I mean, what? Really? Seriously? Um, way up into the violent territory. I'm riding the mod wheel. I sort of can't help myself. And, and I'll just exaggerate it so you can hear what it does do. Just a little bit of expression in there, a bit of volume boost, maybe a bit of filtering, not sure. And if I play quietly at the end, what you've got here, right, okay. Um, this patch is a, called a two-bar legato. And so you get the bowing in one direction for one bar, then you get the bowing in the other direction for the other bar. Uh, there are Time Machine Pro patches for these, incidentally. So that'll sync to your host tempo if you want. This is just a regular one. So it'll play one direction and the other, and then it will loop. In the one-bar patch, it doesn't loop. Uh, so if you want a regular, normal, it will keep on going patch, then the two bar is the one to go for. But okay, so if I play a few notes, and then I'll, for the last note, I'm going to play quietly and hear what happens. That actually ends. It's a sort of a nice diminuendo. And they've got like one bar versions of that as well. So not only is it... A, playing to speed it's adjusting 
depending on how hard you play, for the kind of transition it is. And I guess the idea is you sort of just forget about all that and play the thing. And as you naturally play quietly, it will think, ah, probably we're coming to an ending here. And you can tweak, obviously you tweak things uh, if it's not quite fitting in with what you want. Over here, this is important. This is a vibrato. So this is in the romantic setting. So everything has got that vibrato in it. Um... Uh, this is by default mapped to CC3, and I've got my Avid Artist controller and Cubase here, over here in Cubase, over here. Hi, uh, quick controls that's mapped to CC3, and as I go up and down, I can now switch between that. So let's play anything, something without any vibrato. <laughs> And the bottom end there, that's working really well for me. As it goes up, I can sort of hear that transition a bit because I've obviously recorded one set of legato transitions. As it fades from the transition part of the note to the sustained part of the note. It's not quite as smooth as the romantic. But it's still pretty good. And... And that's transitioning on the fly. Progressive is, as you would suspect, it starts off non-vibrato and it sort of naturally eases in. Again, in that range, I'm hearing the odd kind of slightly abrupt transition. Further down you go, the smoother it all sounds. And now to the strong. I think the fast is really good. Fast looks terrific, doesn't it? And just when we looked in the mics, we've only got close mics. And sort of this is the reason why I think it's much harder to do that kind of fast stuff. It's doable, but it's really hard. Um, it makes your programming life much easier if you're recording with close mics. So it goes way up to this uh, sort of G, G4 territory. That higher than that. C4. Crikey. C5. Um... On all these different vibrato settings. So, I mean, that's, that's in some ways, that's sort of 80% of what I want to show you. The Let's just load in a, <coughs> the one bar. And I think they're at pains to say, orchestral tools, that these are different samples as well. So you might get a different flavor and a different character. I was playing quite quietly there. And that's actually got a crescendo on it. And it's one bar, so it doesn't loop, this one. And again, you've got the half bar. And it's worth spending perhaps a little bit of time getting familiar with how things behave at different velocities. Excuse me. And on the quarter bar. On these, you've got no vibrato and romantic only. That's quite. That might be. This could be a really useful patch when you're playing quite quickly and then you don't want to go into a sustain. You know, you can see how that would uh, that would work. Um, here is our regular sustain patch, which we've got in all the options. Our patch.
So you've got it's pretty limited control there. And you probably, when you want to end a phrase, I'll show you, there's, there are manual patches for doing that as well, as these clever, clever patches. And those, I'll just do a very quick whiz through in, again, different samples. Just with one bar. Um, dum, 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 dum. Of course, when it comes to the shorter ones, it doesn't make any sense to have progressive vibrato because you're not playing long enough for it to be progressive, are you? Uh, and quarter bar. Um, and let's switch through the other articulations here. Tremolo. These go up all the way. You've only got one dynamic there. Uh, Marcato. Lovely bite to that, isn't it? Staccato is actually a very soft staccato if you want to play more gently. And spiccato, well, we've got the bite back for spiccato. And you have got different dynamics here. It's actually just a one sample, I think, but they've kind of, they're doing that with key velocity, not CC velocity. But you can uh, tweak all that with the capsule if it's not to your liking. Uh, where are we? Pizzicato, Pizzicato. Trills patch. Uh, this is good. If you, this is how orchestral tools do their trills sometimes, which is very smart. You don't usually you like have minor trills, major trills, and there's different patches, and you play the root note. In here, if you play one note, nothing happens. <gasps> What's gone wrong? You have to play two notes. So if you're playing G, uh, let me just show you keyboard. Let's get rid of this for a minute. So I'm playing G. Uh, now if I add the G sharp, I'm getting a minor trill. If I add the A. Here it's just going up a semitone each time, and they are, I believe, they're, they're pre recorded for each one. It's just clever scripting to know what to play, and it goes up to more well, less used trills, perhaps. Those can sound conventional, hardly unconventional, are they? But and it goes up to seven semitones, no further, so a perfect fifth. And you've got an extra little control here. So it'll always end where it started if you have that on, which is quite handy. Um, and that's the end of the sort of the those patches. What am I doing here? Uh, quick load, that one. But here's the multi. And multis, orchestral tools, multis, they're beasts. They really are beasts. And you can set up 12 key switches um, with whatever articulations you like. And so this one, you see here, it says, this is the shortcut. You might go, one, two, three, uh, what's that? And it'll tell you if you click on it. It's, oh, no, sorry, click on that. It's half bar decrescendo marcato. If you, and you start to get familiar with that, obviously, after a while. And so this is their default, which they've got mapped to uh, C0. Change them. As a decrescendo. So depending on what you're playing and what style, you might prefer to use a multi-patch to set something up there so you can easily switch between these articulations. Um, what have we got here? A slower decrescendo. Swells. So you've got all this control here. It's... Um, this might be the easiest way to access specific things. I think a lot of these are into the programming, I think, of some of the other patches. 
But if you want to sort of manually get there, then this is your best place. And there's a lot more than what you're seeing here. I'll show you in a minute. Light vibrato. One bar progressive. So hopefully you're starting to hear there's a lot of variety here. It's if you just play that one patch all the time, it might you, the vibrato might might start getting a bit over familiar. But there are definitely ways of of varying it, and that's part of the design. I think. Alto vibrato, heavy vibrato. This one I've actually just stopped and had a little play uh, because this is a strange patch. This is a Marcato Esper Espresso. Uh, it's a coffee, can't be that. Um, because this works slightly differently to normal marcato. So what this seems to do is that you play one note and it's normal, marcato. That's fine. But then if you're holding one note down, look, let's get rid of this. If you're holding one note down, then you can play. It automatically re-triggers the other note. Which might suit some kinds of playing rather well. Right, onwards. Picasso. Now, if you click on any of these, you can change them for something else. This little hooky thing means it's a it's a um, legato patch. So let's go to let's go back here. If you um, click that button, takes the mono. Um, monophonic legato off and you can play polyphonically if you click it on you have your note transitions and look here you've got two bars no vibrato progressive bar, you've got all these different things that if you manually want to select a trill patch you can there staccato pizzicato if you want to you know just completely set that up how you want it and then you can save that patch and that's your customized one you can create multiple customized ones if you save them as different things um, and there's more control under the hood at different speeds you've got different things going on there loads and loads of stuff to play with and it's i'm just showing you really the defaults here um because i say the capsule is a beast and multis are a beast and you i, I could spend sort of two hours just setting things up as i want them but hopefully it gives you a flavor of the library um it's as i say it's 1.0 they're very good i think if you find any issues any fixes just Drop Tobias a line at the library. He's he's great, and he can put point you in the right direction if there's something you're not doing quite right, or they'll uh, take in uh, take any bug fixes on board. I'm sure. Uh, all right. Well, I think that covers that covers it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, see you on another one. Bye, 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 bye.